Good evening, everyone. Uh, we will start the fourth lecture of uh, uh, Professor Dong Han Young from Busan National University. Uh, today, he will teach the quantum information. Uh, please welcome him. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, in the last week, uh, we provided uh, I provided three lectures, including Hawking radiation and Bekenstein Hawking entropy and semi-classical dynamics of uh, black holes. Mm, mm, so uh, by including the renormalized energy momentum tensor, mm, black hole evaporates and we interpret the space-time causal structures, including singularity, mm, apparent horizon, event horizon, and so on. So uh, based on these three um, basic, I mean, the fundamentals of the black hole dynamics, now um, let's uh, think about the uh, quantum information and what is the difficulty of the information loss paradox? Then we should uh, discuss about the uh, quantum information first. And uh, we need to um, have some basic knowledge and we need to be more, um, um, we, we need to talk uh, more about several terminologies, uh, which is a uh, common sense of uh, 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 this uh, community. So, uh, in, in this discussion, so uh, I will focus on several interesting and important topics of uh, quantum information today. So, uh, what I will talk uh, are uh, the follows. First, uh, I have to discuss about the entanglement entropy of uh, uh, bipartite systems. So, bipartite system, I mean that um, the total system has two parts, so one and the other. So. For example, I think one is a black hole and the other is um, uh, radiation, Hawking radiation. So in this uh, system, uh, we will ask what is the information, what is the meaning of uh, the conservation of information in terms of information theory. And uh, in terms of information theory, everything must be presented by in terms of uh, entanglement entropy or uh, the von Neumann entropy. And uh, from that, we obtain the so-called the famous, very famous page curve and, and the notion of page time. So page curve and page time must be covered. And um, uh, we need to shortly mention about one additional time scale. So page time means that black hole uh, information will escape from the black hole around the page time. And there's one more uh, time scale, which is called by the uh, scrambling time which is much shorter than the page time. Uh, and uh, this is based on the hayden Preskill protocol. So I will shortly discuss about this. So um, these two contents are very uh, essential uh, fundamentals of the information theory in black hole uh, physics. But uh, we may ask, is this sufficient or not? So uh, in the end, we will conclude that uh, this is uh, some original pages, uh, bipartite system analysis is indeed uh, a very um, um, a brief picture. So therefore, we need to add uh, several ingredients to describe Hawking radiation and evaporation and so on in terms of quantum um, mechanics. And then uh, we, we will find that indeed, uh, it's very difficult to reconcile all the uh, assumptions. So I will mention, so indeed I will uh, provide you the three uh, different versions of uh, the, um, the information loss paradox. Uh, uh, I will reveal several paradox. One is the, I mean, qubit version. And the second one is the most famous um, AMPS version. So, um, Almeri, Maruf Polchinski service version uh, of the information loss paradox. And the third one is the monogamy entanglement uh, version. Uh, so it, I'm not sure what is the first paper to uh, explain the paradox in terms of monogamy entanglements, but probably the most important paper is uh, Soskin Maldasena's um, so-called ERPR conjecture paper. So in the paper, some details are discussed. So uh, I will show three different versions, but I will um, give the same conclusion which is that uh, indeed uh, several very natural assumptions of the natural rules uh, are inconsistent in the end. So uh, in order to demonstrate all the things, uh, I will show some um, definite uh, exactly solvable model, which is two-dimensional moving mirror. So exactly solvable, I, what I mean is that we can solve semi-classical radiation based on semi-classical formula and in addition, we can uh, exactly evaluate the entanglement entropy of the 2D moving mirror. So of course, it, this is not a black hole. 
So it's very different from the Korea course, but we will find the same uh, question. So uh, if uh, all the assumptions are inconsistent in Korea course, then what is different in the 2D moving mirror case? So I will ask about the solvable model. Um, and uh, finally, I will, um, if time allows, then uh, I will give some comments about the maximal entanglements. So one another uh, very interesting and famous um, proposal um, about the information, I mean, uh, quantum information theory uh, is the so-called horowitz maldasena proposal. So I will uh, shortly think about some variations of the entanglements and so on. Okay, so uh, we must start from this very uh, important and famous paper uh, published in 1993 by Don Page. So this is the entanglement entropy of bipartite systems. Uh, one interesting comment is that um, in my best knowledge, uh, Don Page wrote uh, at least three papers in 1993 about the information loss paradox. But one of them, uh, I mean, one of the three papers, uh, it's just uh, some very light paper. I mean, it's not very serious paper, but two of them are very important. The first one is the this paper, Average Entropy of a Subsystem. And in this paper, they, he discussed about the, the, the integral entropy and uh, he concluded uh, this kind of formula. So approximately, this kind of form must be satisfied. So I will call uh, this is the page conjecture. Later, mathematically, this was proven by some people, and um, numerically, we can also easily um, confirm this. So I will explain about uh, this formula later. And uh, one another important paper is to apply this uh, formula to the real black hole case. So in the real black hole case, uh, so it is the information in black hole radiation. Um, he applied the uh, notion of his integral entropy formula, and then he obtained the so-called the page curve, uh, which describes the integral entropy of the uh, evaporating black holes. And then um, in this paper, you will see such a very uh, famous figure. Okay, so uh, we need to ask uh, the fundamental issues. What is information and what is uh, entropy? Um, so if you uh, find the, the, the very um, basic um, undergraduate level thermodynamics or statistical mechanics books, um, then you will find the information. So the information must be defined from the quantum mechanics. So for each state, uh, this will have a probability and from the probability, we can define uh, the information. So the notion of information, uh, definition of information was first introduced by Claude Shannon, the famous uh, Shannon, uh, which developed the information theory. Uh, so uh, Sh Shannon's information theory is not new in terms of quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics is more fundamental. However, um, so uh, he defined the notion of information and we could uh, find one more point of view uh, to see the nature by, by the other way. So, uh, so the prob basic definition of probability is something like this. So it's minus log pi. So pi is the probability of a, a given state and usually pi is less than one. And this means that information is positive definite. So, so even though here is a minus sign, maybe you don't need to worry about this. And then uh, you may notice that uh, if a probability decreases, then uh, prob probability decreases, the amount of information increases. What's the meaning? And uh, the intuitive meaning is that, um, uh, for example, um, uh, um, so um, the, the amount of information is related to the, the worthy of uh, that information. For example, um, in this classroom, um, I can find that um, there are 37 people at this moment. And um, so for example, I, I guess uh, almost uh, half is men and half is women. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but um, I naively say half is men and half is woman. Then uh, you may ask uh, um, uh, information of uh, Dong An Yam. <laughs> and uh, if somebody let you know that Dong An Yam is a man, uh, then uh, in, in this classroom, uh, almost half is a man. Therefore, 
동안이섬 in the probability is maybe 50% and then it is um, less uh, informative because um, this cannot uh, specify a specific person but uh, if you, somebody gives the information that oh he is the lecturer then uh, um, the probability to find the lecturer is one over 37 therefore it is a way similar than one over two uh, therefore, <laughs> the, it is more informative. So the amount of information is much larger. So, so that is the intuitive reason. So less probable event or state is more information. That is physical intuition. And then um, one can uh, see the notion of entropy in terms of the information. Uh, that is the very important uh, contribution of Claude Shannon. So uh, what is the entropy, especially this is the coarse grained, uh, the von Neumann entropy. So what is the entropy? In terms of information, uh, it is the expectation value of information. So uh, log pi minus log pi times pi, and, and we sum over all i's. Then this becomes the, the expectation value of information. And at, this, at the same time, what, um, what uh, Shannon uh, uh, proven is that uh, indeed uh, the entropy is the capacity of information. You cannot compress more information than its capacity. So um, for example, if you have a one gigabyte hard disk, then you cannot compress more information than one gigabyte. So that is the entropy of your um, hard disk. So uh, uh, as I know, um, Claude Shannon was a worker of a, a telephone company. So in, in terms of a telephone company, um, they need a more efficient way to compress the information. But uh, then uh, practically, we may ask what is the limitation of the compression of the information? And uh, Shannon proven that indeed it is the entropy. So one cannot compress uh, information more than its entropy without loss. That is a very famous theory. So um, uh, from the statistical mechanics, uh, we first uh, define uh, that this is a more, more a fundamental approach. So uh, we first define the uh, density matrix from the quantum state. And then uh, using this density matrix, you define the von Neumann entropy uh, by minus trace the row of row. But uh, if you present this in terms of probability, then you will easily prove that this is minus pi log pi. And indeed, it is the same as the expectation value of the Shannon information. So sometimes you will call this as a Shannon entropy. So if it is presented by the quantum state uh, and, and density matrix, then maybe it's more. I, I, I think there is no sharp uh, difference, but one may say it is the von Neumann entropy. If you present in terms of information, I mean, if you, if you present this information friendly way, then um, this becomes the, uh, the, the um, uh, Shannon, I mean, Shannon entropy, something. But um, these two definitions are always equivalent. And then uh, this von Neumann entropy is uh, different from uh, the thermodynamic entropy. Uh, then what is the corresponding notion that um, provides the bridge between uh, statistical, I mean, uh, quantum mechanics and thermodynamics? And the answer is the so-called uh, uh, Boltzmann entropy. Then usually in general, von Neumann entropy is not the same as the Boltzmann entropy, but um, uh, one ex exceptional case is that uh, if uh, uh, the state is in the thermal equilibrium, then each state has uh, no specific, um, uh, each state is not uh, specifically preferred. So every state are equally probable. So in this thermal equilibrium, then we provide the probability as the one over n. Uh, if n is the, the, the total number of states. Then um, if you plug n, 1 over n uh, to this formula, then you know this sum must be uh, here, n times appears because we have to sum over all states and the other parts are minus 1 over n log 1 over n. And after simple cal calculation, this becomes log n. Of course, I omitted the Boltzmann constant. I, I assumed the k equals 1. Then um, uh, we obtain the Boltzmann entropy like this. And um, what we can conclude is that indeed the, such a Boltzmann entropy is a theoretically uh, possible largest entropy. So um, it's a probabilistically the most preferred state. And indeed, um, the, the, is, this is the possible largest entropy. So in, in for 
the real physical systems, the von Neumann entropy must be smaller, um, equal or smaller than its Boltzmann entropy. Uh, this is the uh, fundamental um, inequality between these two uh, definitions. So, um, all of them are just uh, thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. It's very well known, and you can easily uh, find all the information from um, Wikipedia. Even even Wikipedia, you can uh, see all uh, the results. Then um, now, uh, um, in order to apply for the black hole information loss paradox, um, let's uh, see the entropy of uh, subsystems. So uh, we consider uh, the following cases. First, this is a closed system, and the total number of uh, states are, uh, let's say, capital N. So total number of states are uh, fixed. Uh, it doesn't necessarily be a constant, but uh, for simplicity, we um, fix it as a constant. And, uh, and then, um, you know, uh, if total number of states are N, capital N, then uh, the, the total Boltzmann entropy is rho capital N. Therefore, we may say that initially, the total amount of information of this system is log n, log, log capital N. And this must be, if all the processes are uh, uh, unitary and if this quantum state is pure state, then uh, this must be preserved. So I will say uh, the total information um, is log n. And um, all the particles, all the physical particles were uh, concentrated in part A in the beginning. So, um, analogously, we will interpret uh, B is the radiation and A is the uh, black hole. So, from the beginning, all information are encoded by the particles inside the uh, black hole area. And then, <laughs> um, like this uh, arrow, uh, along this arrow direction, I will take out particles uh, one by one uh, from part A or from the black hole. So, and, and then uh, we will ask what is the, the uh, behavior of the, the information and what is the flow of information or entanglement entropy or anything. That is the question. Now I want to move particles from A to B and will the total information be conserved or not? And then uh, oh, maybe one uh, more important question is, uh, of course we know about the Shannon information, but uh, in this case, what is the proper measure for the information? Because um, in this uh, case, uh, we don't know what is the, uh, so maybe we, we may not know what is the exact uh, quantum state. So if you don't know about the quantum state and probability of its states, then it may be very subtle to define the uh, Shannon information. Then in this background, how can we define uh, information measure to check the unitarity and information conservation? That is the question. So how to define some um, uh, uh, appropriate aid notion of the information? And um, uh, indeed, in 1993, uh, Don Page uh, borrowed the notion uh, from this uh, paper by Seth Lloyd and Heinz Pagels. So in this paper, uh, they discussed about the uh, thermodynamic depth. So uh, this paper was published in 1988. So it was already older than Page's paper. And in, the, in this paper, they introduced so-called uh, thermodynamic depths. Then uh, what, what's the meaning of thermodynamic depths? And uh, indeed, it's not difficult. So uh, thermodynamic depths, uh, this uh, quantity, dt, uh, is defined by the sub by the difference between S bar minus S0, where S bar is the Boltzmann entropy and S0 is uh, the von Neumann entropy of the subsystem. So um, uh, as I mentioned, mathematically, uh, S bar must be greater or equal uh, than uh, the S0. Therefore, uh, this thermodynamic depth is by definition, by construction, it must be a positive definite. So uh, then S bar minus S0 uh, can be a good measure for information in the sense that um, if uh, a system is exactly in the thermal equilibrium, then this thermodynamic depth must be zero because uh, the, the, the von Neumann entropy is the same as the, the, the uh, Boltzmann entropy. However, uh, if uh, there is a non-zero, non-vanishing difference between uh, e between exact summer state and non-summer, uh, I mean, um, state, then uh, you can say that, oh, now we can distinguish information uh, because uh, the system is not 
exactly in the thermal state. So in that sense, this measure is quite useful to de define uh, the information of a subsystem. So this uh, definition was introduced by uh, uh, Tom Page. Of course, um, later uh, we noticed that indeed, um, maybe we don't have to define such a measure and the more important quantity is the entanglement entropy. But um, for, for convenience, let's uh, define a measure of information by this way. So, um, uh, I mean, uh, this is the measure of the information of the radiation. So uh, uh, for the radiation, uh, I, I mean, uh, for the part B, uh, we define the uh, difference uh, by this way. So uh, SP is the uh, Boltzmann entropy of subsystem B, and SP bar A is the entanglement entropy uh, between A and B. Of course, we have to define the phenomenal entropy for B, but uh, for the pure state, indeed, S A bar B is the same as S um, uh, B bar A. Therefore, um, we don't have to worry about uh, which one is traced out first. So this is the entanglement entropy between A and B. So by this way, uh, we define the measure of information for part B. Then this measures the deviation from the exact thermal equilibrium. If Hawking radiation is exactly thermal, then this information measure must be close to zero. But uh, if uh, this I is greater than zero, then you can, uh, in principle, I don't know how to do, but uh, in principle, you can distinguish it from the exact thermal equilibrium. And hence, uh, you will say that Hawking radiation carries information uh, by some way. So this is the um, reason why I introduced this de definition. So um, for part A, we define the information measure this way. And for part B, we define information measure this way. So in addition to the information for part A and information for part B, uh, we need uh, one more ingredient of the information, which is, uh, for um, so in quantum information theory, for some cases, um, there's no information inside the black hole and there's no information in radiation, but uh, information is stored in terms of uh, the entanglement. So um, sometimes uh, there is information that comes from entanglement. Uh, which is known by the mutual information. So um, for the bipartite system, uh, what is the definition of mutual information? And you can easily um, Google it and search it from Wikipedia. Uh, it's, it's not uh, very difficult. Um, and, and you will eventually find this kind of formula. So IA uh, colon B uh, is the um, definition of the mutual information between A and B. So the, the uh, information due to the entanglement. And then uh, this uh, can be presented by this way, as A bar B plus as B bar A minus as A B. However, uh, this definition is uh, for, for the most generic uh, states, including both of, uh, um, including both of uh, uh, pure state and um, uh, mixed state. So if you assume the pure state, then as A bar B equals as B bar A. So therefore, uh, and also, uh, S A B. So A B is indeed A union B. And um, this means that, that the entanglement entropy of the total system, which is zero uh, for the pure state. Therefore, in for the pure state, this becomes two uh, S A bar B. Because S A bar B is the same as S B bar A. Uh, then uh, you, you can, it's very easily check that indeed, uh, if you sum over all information contents, I, A, colon B, then, um, you know, S, A, plus S, B, and um, minus, minus, and 2S. Uh, so um, nothing is added. And then uh, indeed uh, S A and S B are uh, the um, uh, Boltzmann entropy of each system. So this is let's say log n, and this is log m. If you add two things, then this log n times m. However, n times m is the total um, number of states. So it's log capital N. And as I said, um, we fixed the total number of states from the beginning. Uh, therefore, um, this shows that information is preserved. So um, in the, in the, for the bipartite system, information can be, uh, information can be preserved uh, and, and then information 
the form of information can be changed. Either um, information is inside the black hole or um, inside the radiation, or um, information is in terms of the entanglement between black hole and radiation. So uh, information can be one of the three types. And some of all the information must be preserved. That is the, uh, that is the case for the, the pure state. So, so in this sense, we can, uh, for, the, for a pure state, it is satisfied. So uh, one can um, um, check that and for the pure state, information is conserved in this way. So this is the reason why uh, this uh, page's um, definition of or the high, uh, the Lloyd Page's um, definition of uh, thermodynamic depths is um, uh, useful in terms of the information conservation. So then the question is, uh, how can we estimate um, the, the entanglement entropy for a given uh, subsystem? So uh, for a given uh, bipartite system, um, I say um, part A has a small n number of states and part B has a small m number of states. And then how can you estimate the entanglement entropy? Of course, nobody can say this in general <laughs> because um, it uh, highly depends on uh, the quantum state. However, uh, if we assume the, the, the uh, random state, so, so of course we, we don't know about the general case, but uh, for the most uh, um, random case, case, which is very representative one. So if we assume such a random subsystems, uh, random um, systems, then we can estimate the entanglement, entanglement entropy as follows. So this uh, formula was uh, obtained first by Tom Page. And um, uh, this formula is well satisfied if m is, uh, no, no, n is greater than uh, small m. So um, uh, if um, m is greater than small n, then, you know, um, this formula, formula is a symmetric for pure state. So as b bar a is as a bar b. So if you flip this m and n, then uh, you can just obtain, uh, you switch this n and m symmetrically, then you will again obtain the correct formula for uh, the other limit. So maybe this is sufficient. And uh, you know, if n is way bigger than small m, then we can neglect this term. And then you will only obtain one over, sum over one over k. But you know, if you approximately this, describe the integration, then this is approximately the same as log m. And uh, uh, we mentioned that m is smaller than n, and therefore, um, you know, um, this, so if uh, m is smaller than n, then, um, and I said this is a part of b, and this is part a, or whatever, it is it's the smaller part. And then uh, you can conclude that uh, Boltzmann entropy of smaller part is the same as the uh, entanglement entropy. So, uh, if I draw the um, diagram in terms of uh, S, uh, P, so SB will monotonically increase. This is the SB curve. And uh, then SA should monotonically decrease. And then, um, um, you know, um, S, A, B, B must be smaller than S, A, N, S to be together. So physically access, accessible region is only inside this triangle. However, uh, from this uh, conclusion, uh, for the pure and random state, the most probable reasonable uh, expectation is that uh, the curve should be closer, close to, very close to, I'm sorry, so very close to the smaller part. So, so here is the smaller part before the halfway, and after the halfway, the smaller part is this one. So, so the, this formula shows that the curve must be very close to this triangle region. So later I will show a more exact um, result. So uh, this is, uh, thanks to the numerical computation, we can again uh, show this. So, so what I did uh, using, um, I mean, in, in this paper, what I numerically did is uh, prepare several um, spin half uh, states. 
and then um, uh, we um, define the density matrix, but we assign the random states for, let's say, um, 10 uh, spin half particles. Then uh, spin half states is uh, two, I, I mean, one um, up and down uh, quantum state. So the density matrix size must be um, two to 10 uh, times two to 10. So almost 1,000 times 1,000 uh, size uh, big matrix appears. And then from this, we trace out all the, all the um, elements and we can estimate the flow of the, 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 the integument entropy. So uh, this blue dashed curve is the integument entropy of the subsystem. And then, you know, uh, this exact diagonal uh, line is the um, entropy of part A. And this is the entropy of the part B. And uh, you know this um, blue dashed curve is very close to, close to to the the uh, this diagonal line. Therefore, uh, even for this uh, small system, I mean, uh, in this uh, case, I just assumed the random uh, state with the ten number of particles. But uh, the page conjecture is very uh, successful. Therefore, it is not surprising that for the macroscopic black hole cases, the Paisley formula must be very nice. So uh, I uh, took uh, this photo, this uh, this uh, picture from uh, Tom Page's 1993 paper, and what he obtained is that the integral entropy uh, should be should have this kind of triangular shape, and the information should escape by this way. But uh, let me explain once again. So uh, this x axis is the, the thermodynamic entropy. Therefore, uh, the, I mean, this is the radiation entropy. So radiation entropy, SP, must be monotonically increasing. And uh, you can um, plot uh, this as the, just a uh, 45 degree curve. And then uh, we mentioned that the total number of states must be preserved. SA a union B, uh, which is rho capital N, is assumed to be uh, constant. Then the difference between S union B, A union B, and S B is the the uh, the sub, some of the, I mean the Boltzmann entropy of part A, S A, which is the black hole entropy, and it monotonically decreases. Um, it, it is also very trivial. Uh, and then um, from the uh, pages formula, uh, the entanglement entropy uh, must be very close to the red curve before the halfway, and after the halfway, uh, it must be very close to the blue curve. So uh, we obtain this yellow curve. So this is based on the pages estimation of the uh, integral entropy for the pure and random state. So uh, there appears a very important um, point, which is uh, the halfway. Uh, when um, uh, when uh, so one can say that when uh, a black hole emits half of the original entropy, we call the time as the um, page time. So uh, historically, the page time was um, originally named by the information retention time. So retention means that information cannot uh, escape before the this uh, time. So so uh, Soskin named uh, the time scale as the information retention time. But um, nowadays, I think um, everybody calls the page time, <laughs> and I think it's uh, easy to remember. So I, I will name it by the page time. And then uh, uh, before and after the page time, the, what is the information of the radiation? The information of radiation is uh, defined by SB minus SB by A, and which it, it has the, this green colored shape. So before the page time, information uh, in the radiation is negligible. And um, after the page time, um, uh, information is uh, included in the radiation and monotonically increases and eventually um, black hole disappears and all information is encoded uh, in the form of uh, the, the uh, Hawking radiation. So this figure shows uh, this uh, physical meaning. Um, okay, so uh, this is one uh, uh, another figure. Uh, then you may ask what is the uh, um, um, behavior of uh, the information inside the black hole and the mutual information. And uh, the result is this. So maybe from this, this figure, we can also estimate this. So uh, if you are asking about the information of uh, uh, black hole interior, then it is the difference between the entanglement entropy and SA. So that information must uh, follow this curve. 
So before the halfway, the information inside the black hole monotonically decreases and approaches to zero after the page time. So this is so this green colored curve is IB. Uh, the black curve is IA. And one uh, additional um, content of information is the mutual information, but for the pure state, it is um, twice of the entanglement entropy. So twice of the entanglement entropy. So I can easily draw uh, this way. This is the I, A, B. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, mathematically, I, A plus I, A, B plus I, B, uh, some of the three information must be preserved for any time. So uh, you can easily notice that uh, initially, um, information inside the black hole is dominated. So almost all information was inside the black hole. But later, near the page time... Uh, can you explain the, when you say information here, what does it mean? Uh, here, uh, I define yeah. the information e e equals, uh, I mean, I, 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 A, A, I, A, and I, B are defined by the thermodynamic depth. And uh, okay. this so is defined intuitively, by... how can we understand it? Like, uh, for example, some... It, is it information available to some observer or? Ah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so uh, this is the deviation from the exact summer state. So uh, for the exact summer state, S A and S A bar B must be the same. However, if there is a deviation, so non-vanishing deviation, then um, the state is no more in the exact summer equilibrium. And, and then in principle, you can distinguish some information. So this measures the deviation between the exact summer state and the physical state. So summer state, we are sh uh, we think there is no, we don't have any information because right, it's, uh, right. You know, and then if it already deviate from the summer state, that means we have some. Is it yeah, exactly. what you mean? Okay. Yeah, right, right. And uh, is it that means it uh, to the some observer or it, is it independent of the observer or? So uh, if there is an observer, then you may ask, uh, how can we distinguish the information? But uh, in this um, level, we cannot uh, say about the, the meaning of observer and uh, the, the observer. How can observer uh, distinguish this information or, or not? So, so but uh, what we can say is that in principle, there can be a distinguishable information or not. So it's just about maybe fundamental uh, issue. But the, at least it's not the impulling observer. Uh, no. It's like old discussion. Think. No. Uh, okay. Mm, okay. So, uh, so uh, before the page time, uh, IA is dominated. So black hole is almost inside the black hole. And about the page time, now um, there is almost no information inside the black hole, no information in radiation. But almost all information are stored in terms of the uh, mutual information. In the very late time, now uh, almost all information are uh, encoded in the radiation. So uh, this figure explains this. So I draw this figure and information will be transferred from a black hole to mutual information to radiation. This is a three-way um, uh, transfer process. So it's not surprising. <laughs> so um, if, I, um, uh, uh, if I move my house from uh, Busan to Seoul, uh, then um, first uh, all the information of my house was in my um, apartment in Busan, uh, but uh, later all the information are uh, transferred to uh, the this truck. <laughs> then uh, the truck carries all, all of my stuffs. So uh, during the travel, um, I mean uh, my Busan apartment has no um, information, and my Seoul apartment has also new information. Uh, but all information are carried by the truck. But later, eventually, uh, the, the information of the truck will be transferred to new apartment. So then um, uh, this completes the, the information transfer uh, from Busan to Seoul without loss of any um, uh, information. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, you know, so it's not very surprising why uh, the, there is a mutual information which intermediates the information between black hole and radiation. So it's interesting. So, so from the, uh, initially there is a very big black hole and the state was uh, in the blue, uh, this is the curve. But as time goes on, around the halfway, 
um, it reaches the page time, and eventually, um, Gregor completely evaporates and this is the orange colored region. Uh, however, uh, one very hidden assumption is that um, SA is proportional to the black hole area. So uh, what I'm saying is that uh, I, if we assume that uh, the um, black hole's uh, uh, Boltzmann entropy is the same as the uh, Bekenstein entropy, if we assume this, then uh, this halfway is uh, uh, still semi-classical. However, uh, if you don't believe this, and if you say um, Bekenstein King entropy is no more same as the 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 um, Boltzmann entropy of the black hole, so if two are different, uh, then um, or, uh, so uh, around the halfway around the page time, the black hole um, may be very small, may may not be semi-classical. So uh, this is a very important hidden assumption. So uh, this is the summary. So uh, information will be transferred from a black hole to mutual information and later finally transferred to radiation. And all the sum of all information must be preserved in any time. And then uh, before the page time, there may be almost no distinguishable information in radiation. So, so radiation is almost a summer. However, um, after the page time, there must be a deviation from summer radiation, and in principle, we can uh, distinguish the, the, uh, the, the information from radiation. And uh, finally, one remark is that uh, at, the, at the page time, a black hole is still semi-classical. I mean, the size of the black hole is still uh, way bigger than the Planck scale. Uh, however, the hidden assumption is that if we assume that the Boltzmann entropy is the same as the Bekenstein Hawking entropy, so uh, if um, Boltzmann entropy can be uh, bigger than the Bekenstein Hawking entropy, so th this um, combination is called by the monster state. So if uh, such a monster state is possible, then uh, maybe the phase time does not uh, is not necessarily um, be the halfway. I mean the semi-classical case. So this is a hidden assumption. Of course, if you believe this, then you can ignore this. But, but um, just a logical possibility, I will um, remark uh, this. And one more uh, very important uh, issue relating the page curve is uh, the famous Hayden Preskill protocol. So Patrick Hayden and John Preskill wrote a paper, uh, I forgot the year, but 2000 some year, maybe eight or seven. In this year, they wrote a very interesting paper and um, uh, the title is Black Hole as Mirrors. So, you know, uh, if you send uh, a, a light uh, into the mirror, then uh, the light is in almost suddenly um, uh, reflected. Uh, something like this, uh, if you send the uh, information to the black hole, then um, um, if black hole is a kind of mirror, then black hole will emit the information very rapidly. And this is the, the, the uh, result of Hayden and Preskin. Then uh, you may ask, how can we measure, uh, how can it theoretically check whether Hayden Preskill process is right or not? So, uh, in order to confirm their assertions, they uh, provided very, very nice idea. So, uh, so uh, maybe you later, please, you read uh, this figure more carefully. So, uh, what I understand is as follows. So, uh, first, uh, the black hole emitted Hawking radiation beyond the page time. Therefore, uh, early radiation, this part E, and the black hole degree of freedom, uh, this is the black hole, are maximally integrated. And then in this system, uh, I send a bit of information, but if you send a bit of information, and then later, uh, it's very difficult to distinguish whether talking radiation carries about that information or not. So in order to check this carefully, uh, he, and so Hayden and Preskill um, assumed that um, um, initially there is a maximal integral qubit. So one is uh, Alice and uh, the other is, I don't know, Charlie maybe. So this M and N are uh, maximally integral. And uh, this maximally integral um, uh, red colored qubit uh, falls into the black holes. And then uh, after this force into the black hole, this VB is the, the process of the mixing. So it, this VB is randomized randomize all the information inside the black hole and um, later it radiates to the Hawking radiation. 
some of them will remain inside the black hole and some of them will be escaped by the radiation. And uh, what the Charlie uh, can uh, check is the, uh, the only E and R. So E union R, let's say E union R. And then uh, the Charlie is um, um, computing computes, um, the, uh, some information quantity. More formally speaking, um, Charlie estimate the, the fidelity of the state. So if the fidel from uh, this emitted radiation, uh, if it preserves the fidelity of the original uh, state N, since N and M are maximally entangled, so if uh, the information of N is um, preserved, I mean, the fidelity is very close to one, then uh, you can uh, notice that uh, now the origin, uh, of collapsed information is rapidly escaped uh, from the black hole. That is the um, Hayden Prescott's idea and um, Hayden Prescott's way to recover the influent information. So that's the reason why uh, sometimes we usually call uh, this as a protocol. So by using some mechanism, we recover the information. So, so uh, this we call Hayden Prescott protocol. So uh, this, is, this is the uh, details, uh, the uh, explanation. So one sends a particle Charlie of a maximally entangled pair, uh, Charlie and David to the black hole. So Charlie and David is the uh, um, uh, entangled pair and Charlie falls into the black hole after the page time. And one evaluates the fidelity between the Hawking radiation, um, let's say the Hawking radiation as a path and its partner David. So um, 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 Charlie uh, falls into the black hole and and then um, Charlie disappears. We cannot say anything about Charlie later, but <laughs> uh, we can uh, compute the fidelity between David and Bob. And then uh, if uh, the fidelity is close to one, then um, we can say that, oh, then maybe um, Charlie is um, dissolved <laughs> by particles, but eventually his information escapes eventually. You may conclude this way. Uh, so Hayden and Prescott confirmed that the fidelity will be very quickly recovered to one, and then information must escape from the black hole as a mirror. So I mean, it must be very rapidly escapes. Then the question is, um, if uh, it is the process is very rapid, then how rapid? How can you measure this rap rapid process? And the answer is, uh, how how can the black hole uh, uh, scrambles the information rapidly? How can it randomize? So, I mean, it's up to the speed of the randomizing process. So if the black hole is a fast scrambler, then uh, as long as uh, the black hole scrambles sufficiently, then it, it will uh, very directly emit the, the important information. That is the notion of the black hole as a mirror. So again, in, in our paper, we um, numerically demonstrate the hub. And uh, this, uh, I think that their, their um, conclusion is right. So uh, if the mixing is sufficient, then after the page time, the, the edited information will escape very rapidly. So maybe we don't have to um, um, worry about their conclusion. <laughs> so uh, if you are interested in, then please read uh, their papers uh, carefully. So uh, uh, the important comment is that there are time scales. So in terms of the evaporating black holes, uh, the, the information uh, retention is up to um, M cube. So, uh, on, so it's the time scale that black hole uh, decreases to its halfway size. So, of course, it's shorter than the black hole lifetime, but it's, it's the order of the, the lifetime. So, still, the black hole is semi critical, but the time scale is M cube, which is very long. However, uh, according to the Hayden Prescott protocol, uh, after the page time, if you send a bit of information, then it will um, emit the information very rapidly. Then the necessary time is the mixing time. So, so or one can say the scrambling time. So scrambling means um, mix and randomize it. Then how long does it take to randomize? And there is no formal way. I mean, there's no formal proof of this, but um, naive estimation is that um, it may be proportional to log s over t. Then why why is this? Um, and there are several explanations by several authors, including um, Saskind and his colleagues. So um, if we assume this, then um, log s is log m square, and uh, is proportional to log m, and t is proportional to one over m. So the time scale is what m log m. So if you compare this m cube and m log m, then uh, this is way smaller than m cube. So um, 
this is the shorter time scale to emit the information. So as a common sense, please keep these two words. So page time is m cube and uh, scrambling time is m log m for uh, um, Schwarz set black hole cases. So now we uh, uh, came to um, this question. So I introduced the very famous uh, conclusions of uh, Tom Page and Hayden Preskill, but is this sufficient to understand the information of paradox or not? Mm, usually, if we ask this question, then the answer is usually no. <laughs> so, so is this sufficient? And probably the answer is not true. So uh, this is the page's picture. Initially, um, all the uh, particles are inside the black hole. Uh, before evaporation, all particles are randomly entangled inside the horizon. So this black um, dotted curve uh, is the event horizon. And this uh, blue this curve is uh, the entangled region. So if uh, um, these particles are uh, surrounded by this blue this curve, then I what I'm saying is that uh, this, these black uh, dots are entangled each other. So uh, from the beginning, this is uh, the case. This is okay. I, maybe nobody will doubt about this figure. And then in page figure picture, uh, one particle uh, comes out this way. So after one particle is emitted, um, still um, you know um, blue dash uh, curve is um, preserved. So this is the, the original uh, pages um, picture. And then based on this assumption, we could obtain the page uh, curve. However, um, so causally it's very strange. If you take a particle from inside the, the event horizon to the outside, then maybe it, it violates the basic um, laws of uh, the general relativity. So in, in real world, um, the real world is not so simple. <laughs> so uh, we want to recover pages um, two steps but indeed uh, uh, the real physics is not that simple and um, then we need more ingredients let me explain this so what really happens is that uh, for a black hole state um, we create particle and antiparticle pair uh, outside the event horizon so from the first lecture what I mentioned is that uh, we can interpret the hooking radiation as a particle antiparticle pair creation so uh, particle antiparticle pair is created, but all of them must be the unitary process. So um, near the horizon, um, there must be no uh, direct entanglement from the beginning. So from the beginning, these uh, red and blue dots are uh, just a maximally entangled pair, and um, it's, it must be separable. So separable means that uh, these two particles are not entangled to the others. Then um, for the unitary process, you can add uh, the, such a uh, separable pairs to the system. So it is unitarily possible. So we add this particle antiparticle pair and this antiparticle pair uh, falls into the black hole. And usually we interpret that this antiparticle pair um, uh, has the negative energy flux. Therefore, uh, the total uh, due to the energy conservation, the black hole energy should decrease area should decrease and um, uh, initially there was the entanglement between red and black dots therefore if the red dot uh, falls into the black hole then um, there appears the entanglement between black hole and uh, radiation so uh, then you may ask what is the amount of the the, the, the entanglement entropy between this radiation and black hole and and um, it is nothing but the so, such an increase of the entanglement entropy must be the same as the entanglement entropy between red dot and bl blue dot. So, and we assume that this was uh, the maximal entangled from the beginning. Therefore, uh, after this portion to the black hole, uh, the, the maximal entanglement um, must be preserved. Therefore, uh, the entanglement entropy increases as large as possible. So that is the definition of the maximal entanglement. So um, after you create the particles, if uh, the uh, counterpart falls into the black hole, then um, the entanglement entropy should increase as large as possible. Therefore, this is consistent to the page conjecture, at least before the page time. So uh, before the page time, it was not. Uh, it is not very. Uh, strange to believe that the hooking radiation is summer and because uh, we assume that uh, so we know that uh, the, the hooking particle and particle pairs are maximally entangled so so uh, so 
um, entropy uh, increased as large as possible, and black hole mass decreases. So this is the usual picture of the uh, black hole um, radiation. However, uh, one uh, important uh, difference uh, between the pages picture and this is that uh, now. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I have some question. Yes. So uh, actually, uh, pale created particles are entangled. Actually. Right. Right. So, but uh, on the background of, so the background field might play the role of the uh, external field. Right. The, it might spoil the entanglement, I think. How do you think? Ah, of, of course, yeah, right, right, it's possible. So, uh, 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 so the particle, antiparticle pair creation process must be separable, separable mm -hmm. process. However, at once it, it is created, um, there may be some other particles near the horizon, other, other looking particles, pairs or anything. And then this may spoil the maximal entanglement. It is surely true, and I will mention in at the end of uh, this lecture. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think that is a very important point, but um, people usually ignore. Uh, but, yeah. but I think that is important point. Yeah. But uh, at this moment, um, let's ignore about that. Then, then uh, <laughs> this okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a very important comment. Okay. So uh, now. Uh, the number of particles increases. So because initially, initially there was a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight particles, but now uh, this becomes 10. Therefore, um, the question is how can you erase states inside the black hole? That is an important question. Then uh, if you erase two particles inside the black hole, then um, definitely uh, this is non-unitary. Uh, but the only exceptional case is that if you uh, find a um, um, separable pair inside the black hole. So uh, if uh, this uh, red, red uh, dot find its partner, uh, black dot, uh, and uh, if uh, these two partners are um, entangled only with them, so if it is a kind of separable pair, uh, so uh, I don't know how which mechanism make uh, this process, but if it is possible, then uh, you can unitarily separate these two, I mean, you, you can unitarily annihilate this separable pair. So this pr process is completely unitary. Then uh, the mission is complete. So you will uh, obtain the pages um, uh, final figure. So one particle um, comes out from the black hole by keeping the entanglement. When it, and the, the, the pure stateness is preserved. This is the, what um, we need to explain. So this is the mission complete. But the red particles yeah. are actually uh, entangled with the uh, outgoing particles. So uh, it does break the monogamy principle or not? Uh, this, uh, it, it, up to now, uh, uh, maybe this is okay because, you know, uh, inside the black hole, all of them are uh, interacting. So in principle, this get interacting. So, um, so maybe this red dot now, uh, due to the uh, random idea, Integralments can be transferred to this black one, and then maybe it's not impossible in principle to find its partner, I think. So yeah, then now the question is, can we really do it or not? I mean, uh, this is the question about, not about the practical issue, but it is about um, the fundamental question. Can you really do it? And uh, I think that the answer is this is surely impossible if a black hole is after the page time. So before the page time, uh, it, it is very um, subtle, but um, there is no uh, reason to um, um, prevent. But after the page time, um, we can surely say that uh, this process is uh, highly um, 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 impossible. So after the page time, what happens? So this is the page time. So uh, inside it has a, uh, four particles and outside is four particles and they are entangled along this uh, blue uh, this the curve. And now uh, we add uh, one more hooking particle and antiparticle pair. Uh, when you say entangled, is it multipartite entanglement or just a bipartite? Ah, bipartite. I, what I'm saying is the bipartite entanglement. So, um, um, these four particles and the other four particles are entangled. Of course, uh, each particles can be entangled together. Um, 
but the as uh, other said the, the mono, how about the monogamy it is also bipartite ah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i will mention later about the monogamy of entanglements but it is about the uh, maximal entanglements so uh -huh. if uh, particle a is maximally entangled to b then a cannot be maximally entangled to c but uh, if it is not maximally entangled then I such see. entanglement can be um, so i can entangle to b and c and d at the same time okay so, so usual entanglements can be multiple, but maximal entanglements are um, uh, exclusive. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, okay. So uh, let's uh, uh, insert these two particles and we obtain this kind of figure. Then uh, outside there's five particles and inside there's five particles. So uh, the entanglement entropy was the increase. So this is very simple. So we add two, we add two particles and each of them are maximal entangled and both of them uh, separated, then the maximal entanglement must increase. But later, uh, I will uh, uh, annihilate two particles inside. So I will uh, erase these two particles unitarily. So if two particles disappears, then outside there's five particles and inside there's three particles. Therefore, um, degree of freedom inside the black hole should decrease, and then entanglement entropy should decrease. So, uh, one conclusion is that entanglement entropy must decrease. However, uh, as I mentioned, uh, th these two particles are separable. So uh, if uh, separable pairs are created or annihilated inside the black hole, and if there, there is no non-local relation between inside and outside, then nobody cares. In terms of the entanglement entropy, nobody cares whatever you erase uh, two particles or not. So if a separable pair inside the horizon is annihilated, then unless there is a non-local relation, the entanglement and entropy cannot be changed. This is also very true. So uh, in the previous slide, I said uh, this must decrease. And uh, in the second slide, it cannot be changed. It, it must be a constant. So uh, th then this means that after the pace time, uh, it is we cannot decide whether the entropy should decrease or preserves. <laughs> uh, this is um, um, uh, maybe uh, uh, please. So I, I'm thinking you may you, you may need some time to figure this out. But but indeed it's a very problem. So uh, this is yeah. Please think uh, more details. So um, this means that uh, before the page time we cannot provide this argument. But after the page time a particle annihilation is impossible inside the horizon and this causes the problem. Yeah, so uh, one may ask um, why so serious about the information loss paradox, <laughs> and uh, this is really serious. Uh, indeed, uh, what, uh, uh, up to now, what I um, used is the, somehow the very qubit toy model. So based on qubit toy model, I explained why uh, the information loss paradox is very difficult and problematic, but uh, I think uh, it's a little bit different, but the same philosophy uh, was encoded in this fa very famous paper, AMPS in 2012. So um, complementarity or firewalls, and um, later um, tomorrow I will discuss about the uh, complementarity and its controversy. But today I will just um, deeply mention. I, 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 I focus over. I will focus to the 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 AMPS argument basically. So so um, there is a black hole horizon, and there is a um, um, time scale, which is information retention time or the page time. And um, in AMPS argument, um, they provided three uh, subsystems. One is uh, the earlier part E, uh, earlier part of the Hawking edition E, and uh, the other is the later part of Hawking edition L. The third part is the infilling counterpart of F. And, and then E, L, F, R, maybe if we just assume the Hawking's computation and local quantum field theory and general relativity, then Three of them must be well defined. Okay, and then um, um, there exists an uh, infilling observer who measures the entropy from early, earlier part and later part and infilling part. So um, why not? In principle, we can consider such an observer who uh, evaluate the entanglement entropy of each part. And then uh, for this uh, tripartite systems, uh, there are known to be uh, three and no, no, two um, um, strong sub-additivity and sub-additivity relations. Uh, 
So this is just a mathematical relation. So we need to accept for uh, any uh, systems. So, um, so for example, E L E L. What is E L? E uh, S E L is the the, the uh, von Neumann entropy of uh, E union L. So E union L is the the entire Hawking radiation. So the the this S E L is the entire Hawking radiation uh, von Neumann entropy. Therefore, this is the uh, entanglement entropy between black hole and radiation. The meaning of S E union L is the the entanglement entropy of, between black hole and radiation. So based on this, let's uh, um, think this. So uh, if we consider after the page time, S E union L must be less than S E, because S E is the, the entanglement entropy at the page time. Therefore, um, S E union L must be strictly smaller than S E. So this is the uh, conclusion of the Dom page. And uh, due to the unitarity and uh, this and that, uh, we believe this relation. The second uh, relation is SLF. What is SLF? Uh, this is uh, the system L union F. And L union F is what? So uh, L is uh, radiation and F is its um, partner. And um, if all processes are unitary, then uh, L union F must be a separable state. So for a separable state, um, the, the entanglement entropy must be zero. So um, this, nothing happens for free falls. So Hawking pairs are always separable. Therefore, SL union F uh, must be zero. So this is the um, two, um, very simple and um, maybe probably true results. But if we apply these two relations to the, the, the uh, um, these two uh, inequalities, then you will easily conclude that SL, I mean the rate of part uh, uh, entanglement entropy must be negative. But you know, um, it is impossible that the, the entanglement entropy in, over any part is negative. So, <laughs> uh, so this shows the, the inconsistency. So uh, this is indeed consistent to my um, uh, previous figure. So uh, if you add, uh, uh, at the page time, if you add the separable pair, it is the separable pair. So this is the separable condition. Uh, if you add this separable pair, and uh, if you uh, trace out two particles um, uni uh, with the unitary process, then uh, there appears the problem. So the, the question is whether the entanglement entropy can decrease or um, cannot be changed. This is the question. So, um, so this uh, SLF is the uh, condition for the uh, separable pair of the Hawking uh, particle and particle pair. So we accept it. And then, um, you know, um, this is inconsistent. So uh, S SE union L um, can be smaller than uh, SE. I mean, the entanglement entropy over radiation can decrease or not. <laughs> so so um, what, what I said is that there is an inconsistency between the decrease of the entanglement entropy after the phase time. So, um, so according to AMP's argument, if you um, insist this relation, then some part of entanglement entropy must be negative, and which is fairly inconsistent. Yeah. So, um, yeah, one may uh, say say that. So, I think um, uh, you may see the same physics by two different point of view. One is maybe toy model, cubic model, and the other is in terms of the uh, entropy. And maybe I can provide one more point of view, which is based on the monogamy of entanglement. So what is monogamy? So it's a, probably it's the biological world or social world. So um, um, in the monogamy society, um, um, a man can marry with only one wife. But in polygamy society, a man can marry with several wives or uh, a woman can uh, marry with several husbands. So, the monogamy means and one must be paired to the uh, its partner. So in terms of entanglement, as I mentioned previously, of course, um, a particle can be entangled to many other particles, but uh, for the maximal entanglement case, um, one particle can be maximal entangled to its partners. So, so um, um, I need to introduce one uh, word, uh, uh, this uh, quantum, uh, I mean, Entanglement distillation protocol. I have to introduce this word. So uh, it's uh, well known that in quantum information theory, 
for a bipartite system with maximal, maximum entanglement, uh, of course, it doesn't necessarily maximum entanglement, but what I am interested in is, is the um, at around the page time. So uh, for a bipartite system with maximum entanglement, uh, so I mean the entanglements are reached the maximum value, then uh, one can decompose the system as a sum of maximal entangled pairs. So uh, it is not, it is very unnatural, but by introducing some uh, local operations and classical communications. So, so in, in quantum, um, quantum uh, information theory, we call LOCC, so local operations and classical communications. Uh, about the exact meaning, please um, uh, Googling about this. Yes, I, I don't know very well, but <laughs> the, uh, uh, this is about the local, maybe physically realizable um, applications. So based on this protocol, uh, one can uh, always decompose the system as the sum of maximally entangled pairs. This is important. So, um, for for the um, um, integrated systems, you can distill two particles which is maximally integrated. So, um, if uh, two systems are reached uh, in the, the maximum integrated state, then you can distill and you can find uh, two maximally integrated particles. That is the important uh, point. So, based on this uh, uh, wisdom, uh, maybe um, uh, we can say this way. So this is uh, the Maldasen uh, and Saskin uh, point of view uh, about um, the um, um, information loss paradox. So after the page time, this is the Hawking radiation B, and uh, the late radiation and earlier radiation are um, uh, reached about the um, entanglement, entanglement. Therefore, uh, you can find a counterpart RB uh, by using the quantum uh, distillation protocol. So you can uh, find that of P uh, and RB are maximally entangled. So, so this is due to the phase curve and this is due to the unitarity of the uh, space time. So, so um, uh, based on distillation uh, protocol, you can always find the RB. And at the same time, um, P is maximally entangled with its partner, uh, inferring partner, A. So maximally entangled due to the QFT and um, general relativity and, and so on. So B is, must be maximally entangled. Then um, now in terms of the maximal entanglement, um, B violates the monogamy principle. So B is uh, married to A and RB at the same time, which is illegal in terms of the nature. So uh, this, uh, this is impossible due to the monogamy of entanglement. So uh, then, um, um, this is, this is somehow a different point of view of the uh, information loss paradox um, by Malta and Saskin. And later, uh, based on this monogamy argument, um, um, people, uh, they uh, proposed a new idea to explain the information loss paradox, um, so-called ERPR conjecture. But um, uh, about this, I will discuss tomorrow. So this is the summary of to uh, these three arguments, three um, alternative and complementary arguments. Uh, the five assumptions of the natural laws, uh, the laws of nature, cannot be true at the same time. The first one is the unitarity. The second one is the local quantum field theory. It's about the Hawking's derivation and also the, the hot rocking state or unruh state or uh, Hawking hot rocking derivation of Hawking radiation and so on. All of them. So it's based on local QFT. The third one is the general relativity, which is up to the singularity. So of course, at the singularity, we cannot trust the GR, but um, before GR, near the horizon, um, maybe um, G, nothing, that strange thing uh, must happen. So sometimes uh, people say no drama condition near the horizon. So this is about general relativity. And uh, usually uh, number four is a hidden assumption, but um, Beckenstein Hawking entropy equals Boltzmann entropy. Uh, if we neglect this idea, then maybe we, we may overcome the problem. So number four is also another uh, idea. And number five is the existence of information observer. So if nobody can distinguish information from working radiation, then mm, there may be no mm, fundamental problem. Uh, for example, in AMPS thought experiment, there was an inferring observer who counts the, the entanglement entropy, but if it is impossible by some unknown reason, then maybe one can reconcile the tensions between one to four. So uh, maybe existence of information observer um, can be one hidden assumption. So um, 
maybe some of them are trivial to you, but um, I just listed all of them for just the logical possibilities. So tomorrow I will review them, them uh, which one is wrong. And, and so, um, so it's up to your choice. So who is wrong and um, you will kill who? You will kill, you will kill whom? <laughs> okay. So, uh, so um, now uh, still a little bit time uh, remains. So let me um, mention about one interesting topic. So up to now I said that these uh, five assumptions are inconsistent with each other. Then um, is there any uh, semi-classical system that uh, radiates Hawking-like radiation? And also one can define the, the entanglement entropy, but the unitarity is also satisfied. Is this, can there be such a system? And, um, and the answer is uh, yes. The, the answer is yes. So uh, exactly solvable, unitary, somehow evaporating. Uh, it's not evaporation, but um, radiating model. is the two-dimensional moving mirror. So um, I will uh, very briefly mention about this result based on Fulling and Davis and um, Davis Fulling on the formula around the 1976, seven and so on. And then um, the first uh, successful result um, to evaluate um, uh, the 2D moving mirror, I mean, in, in computation of the entanglement entropy was introduced by Horce, Larson, and Wilczek, Frank Wilczek in 1994. And, and Recently, this um, result, Wilczek's result, was um, emphasized once again by Bianchi and Smolak in 2014. And also, uh, I myself wrote a paper on, on the other context um, in terms of the information loss paradox. So uh, let me uh, very briefly mention about 2D moving mirror. So um, mirrors um, radiate some, some accelerating mirror radiates some uh, hooking-like radiation uh, because um, there is a red shift. The, the moving mirror is a surface of the reflecting boundary condition. And if it accelerately um, uh, moves, then there appears the horizon, event horizon. And also, um, the, as the boundary shifts, uh, some mode, quantum modes can be stretched. So the incoming modes are uh, red shifted and bounced due to the, due to the uh, acceleration. And uh, so, as I mentioned in the first lecture, if there is a, a, a strong uh, redshift, then there is a corresponding Hawking-like radiation. So, so moving mirrors are usually believed that uh, it radiates some some thermal fluxes. So, uh, in this UN V coordinate, uh, um, I will not say the mathematical details, but if uh, this mirror trajectory follows the PU, uh, and then um, uh, we obtain a very simple formula. So as a function of u, so u is uh, this uh, uh, left moving direction. So along this u direction, um, there is an outgoing uh, energy fluxes, which can be computed by this way. And this, this formula comes from the Davis Fring on the paper. So without any proof, uh, I will just accept this. So, so interestingly, uh, we know everything about the, the semi-classical radiation for the moving mirrors. And uh, at the same time, uh, at the same time, uh, we may ask, uh, how can you define the entanglement entropy? So, um, in Horthy, Larsen, and Wilczek's paper, they uh, define this way. So, uh, this p is the trajectory of the mirror, and um, define uh, two times. So, in terms of u, so this point is u zero, and this point is u. And then you can draw the null lines this way, and you can separate two systems. One is A, and the other parts are B. So uh, one can define, one can evaluate the entanglement entropy between A and its complementary part, uh, B. And then um, what is the interpretation? And then, uh, you know, uh, as time goes on, um, in the part A, um, particles are emitted. And as this boundary moves, as a function of u, uh, radiation will be included in this part A. So <coughs> for the part B, the radiation is still not counted. Therefore, one may interpret that this A in includes the uh, already emitted radiation, and this part B is somehow uh, radiation which is not emitted yet. So maybe it's a steam inside the mirror or whatever. So uh, if you compute the entanglement entropy between A and B, then this can be very analogous to the entanglement entropy between a black hole and Hawking radiation. And then in the two-dimensional case, 
uh, we can very easily uh, obtain uh, the, the entanglement entropy formula by this way. But uh, this epsilon is the cutoff. Uh, cutoff. So uh, if epsilon goes to zero, then this formula simply diverges. Um, however, um, what we can say is that uh, if you compare to the um, um, uh, 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 stationary mirror, uh, so even in the stationary mirror, uh, the entanglement entropy diverges due to this cutoff. So uh, by comparing to the uh, stationary mirror case, you can renormalize this everything, and then you will obtain a finite result in terms of the uh, mirror trajectory. So this is a very simple and very surprising result. So uh, at once you know this uh, entanglement entropy formula, then you know everything about the semi-critical radiation as well as quantum gravitational entanglement entropy. And then um, by uh, defining some uh, trajectory, you can compute the, the entanglement entropies in terms of the time. So, uh, so uh, this is the time scale and this is the entanglement entropy. And um, there are three uh, cases. So three cases are a little bit different, but the common point is that the integral moment entropy increases and reaches the maximum and decreases to zero, which is um, very uh, the, is, this is the, which is qualitatively the same behavior of the page curve. So integral moment entropy increases and reaches the maximum value and decreases. Uh, such a behavior uh, can be perfectly explained uh, in terms of the two-dimensional moving mirrors. Then you may ask, what happens at this phase time? And at this phase time, the entanglement entropy begins to decrease, but at the same time, the mirror uh, decelerates. That is the point. So um, if the mirror if accelerates, then it emits radiation. Also, if the mirror decelerates, uh, again, the, the mirror uh, emits some particles, but um, when the mirror decelerates, the entanglement entropy begins to decrease. And um, uh, yeah, so uh, if the mirror de decelerates and eventually stops, then page curve uh, go back to, uh, I, I mean, the entanglement entropy decreases and eventually approaches to zero. So uh, the, the essential problem is that uh, is the deceleration of the mirror. So, um, so for the black hole case, um, this Hawking particle is maximally entangled both of uh, earlier radiation and incoming counterpart. That is the monogamy problem. At the same time, uh, for the mirror case, uh, now it's a little bit different, but uh, you may say that uh, in the earlier part, um, earlier radiation and there is a, its counterpart. Then, so this earlier part has a maximally entangled to its counterpart. And at the same time, this earlier part is maximally entangled to the uh, rain radiation. So again, um, if it is in the semi-classical system and also um, it's about the um, uh, about the unit, I mean, unitary system, then uh, there also appears the monogamy problem, not only black holes, but also the mirror case. However, this mirror case is different from the black holes because, um, you know, uh, this is the early radiation and this is the counterpart. But this counterpart will be bounced to the mirror because uh, after the phase time, the mirror is decelerated. So if the if this boundary is decelerated, then uh, this uh, early radiation is causally connected to the rain radiation. So indeed, uh, this is the same as this one. Therefore, um, in the mirror case, in, apparently there is a monogamy problem, but indeed it's not the case. So uh, the late time radiation and the partner mode causally connected and hence there is no inconsistency for the mirror case. However, in the black hole case, uh, there is no causal connection between this earlier radiation and its counterpart. So uh, unless you provide a very non-local relations, uh, this cannot overcome the problem of the um, paradox. So that is the phys very um, uh, serious physical difference between the moving mirror and the black hole case. So in, in this very famous paper, Almeri Maruk Kulczynski, Stanford Surrey, so AMPSS paper, uh, Apologia for Fireworks, the conclusion is that um, uh, non-local theories can avoid fireworks, but only if the non-localities are suitably dramatic. If the non-local effects are very uh, some leading order, then it cannot explain uh, the informational paradox. So um, 
this this part so the earlier radiation and uh, the uh, uh, rain radiation counterpart must be um, causally connected uh, this idea was introduced by the ER repair conjecture but tomorrow i will discuss about that so again we reach the same conclusion these five assumptions uh, cannot be true at the same time so um, I'm sorry that uh, I only have uh, five minutes, but um, using that time, let me very quickly mention about uh, one more uh, fascinating topic uh, about the maximal entanglement issue. So uh, in 2004, uh, Horowitz and Maldasena pro provided a, a very, um, very interesting idea. I think this is not the very perfect idea, but um, this is a very, um, uh, I mean, stimulating idea so-called the uh, black hole final state idea. So according to this paper, um, they assumed as follows. Hawking radiation is maximally entangled with, with its counterpart. And collapsing matter is maximally entangled with incoming radiation. And uh, so, so the, the second part is very uh, strange thing. So, so uh, collapsing matter is maximally entangled to its incoming radiation. And, um, and then there exists a projection near the singularity. By projecting this, um, like the quantum teleportation, uh, information inside the black holes are uh, transferred to outside, which mimics the, uh, the, the uh, uh, quantum teleportation protocol. So mathematically, the first one says that the incoming and outgoing radiations are maximally entangled. And um, also, this is the second uh, very strong assumption, which is that the, the infalling matter states and incoming hooking uh, radiations are also maximally entangled. And based on this uh, final state, we project the incoming state. And then, um, so we obtain the unitary S, S matrix, which is divided by N. So this is the subtle things. So, uh, you know, in this case, there are three subsystems. One is uh, initial collapsed matter, which is degree of freedom N. And the other is hooking radiation, which is degree of freedom N. And also there is an incoming counterpart, uh, let's say degree of freedom n. Then um, um, by including all the hooking radiation and um, partners, the the entire uh, the entire uh, Hilbert space increased. But by projecting uh, this part, um, one can reduce the Hilbert space smaller once again. But um, due to this, there appears one of an uh, renormalization factor. This renormalization factor means that the, the entire process is non-unitary. However, if you select only some part of the quantum process, it is so-called the super selection. The, for, by considering this super selection, uh, you may feel up to renormalization, you will uh, obtain the, the unitary matrix. Anyway, this is the real, real, realization of the quantum teleportation. Mm, so maybe um, you don't have to believe this, but what I want to mention is that um, this strongly based on the maximal entanglement idea. So uh, two assumptions. One is that um, between the incom incoming and outgoing Hawking radiation, they are maximally entangled. And the other is uh, infalling matter and incoming Hawking radiation, they are maximally entangled. However, uh, such a maximal entanglement condition, condition can be easily broken. So uh, as a few minutes ago, as a professor Kim uh, mentioned, um, if there is some interaction between matter and incoming radiation, or if there is any unknown interaction between uh, incoming counterpart and outgoing hooking radiation, like this operation, then the maximum, maximal entanglement condition can be easily break down. So um, if the, such a maximal entanglement condition easily break down, then, um, this not only breaks uh, the mechanism of the horowitz maldasena proposal. Uh, so, so I mean, uh, I'm saying that this, this possibility was discussed by Lloyd and Preskill in 2013. So what I'm saying is not um, very um, funny, but many experts are considering these possibilities. So if a maximal entanglement of a hooking pair can break down, then what happens? to the um, page time, because uh, in order to justify the page time before, I, I mean, in order to define the page curve before the page time, we uh, assumed that microscopically hooking particle antiparticle, antiparticles are maximally entangled. However, if there are some interactions between these systems and such a maximal entanglement condition breaks down, 
then, uh, so, uh, you know, we assume the maximum entanglement pair, but if uh, we turn on some interactions, then the maximal, maximum entanglement very rapidly approaches to the other value. So which is way smaller than the maximal entanglement condition. And if this uh, effect is accumulated for a long time, then you may see the deviation from the original page curve. So uh, this, um, so in the original page curve, this blue um, entanglement entropy curve must be very close to this red curve. But if we turn on the interactions and if one breaks the maximal entanglement, then the blue um, curve should be a little bit lower than uh, this red curve. And then uh, there is a non-vanishing deviation between red curve and uh, gray, uh, I mean, this green curve. And then this may mean that information may escape even before the page time, if the hooking uh, particle and particle pairs are not maximally entangled. And then um, this may cause very subtle problems because information escapes from the black hole in the too early time. So uh, all the discussions are uh, attached in my recent paper. So uh, I like this paper uh, because uh, this paper is still uh, unpublished. It's not accepted and rejected by one journal. So I, I believe that this will be published in some time, but this was rejected by two referees. And one referee said that um, your paper is too trivial. So everybody knows about that. So your paper has uh, no new content, so reject. And the second referee said that your paper is um, um, contradictory to the common sense of the modern um, uh, development. So your paper is um, completely wrong, so your paper cannot be published. <laughs> so, so one referee rejected because it's too true, and, and the other referee rejected because it's too wrong. <laughs> so I like this paper. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, and I will welcome your criticism about this paper. But anyway, um, this is just uh, my comment. Uh, so what, whenever the mechani any mechanism explains the information emission process, the mechanism must explain the way how can information be escaped even before the page time. So of course, uh, it is very difficult to explain after the page time. But uh, even before the page time, still there are, can be some um, subtle issues if uh, the the, the maximal entanglement condition breaks down due to some more subtle uh, interactions. So we have uh, um, many interesting remaining questions. Uh, okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the great uh, uh, talk. And uh, please ask any question. Uh, can I ask you a question? Uh, yes. Uh, in the Hayden Pascal uh, protocol, yes. assume that the uh, uh, inferring matter and uh, there is a maximally entangled state uh, between yes. inferring matter and uh, some reference system. Yes. So is this uh, necessary for retrieval of the inferring matter? Uh, I don't think so. It's not necessary, but in, the, the question is, um, if their assertion is true, then how can we mathematically check? So, uh, you know, you, you throw out uh, the Alice to the black hole, then um, how can you say that this radiation is about Alice? Because Alice is now in the black hole. So then uh, in order to um, um, uh, confirm their assertions, they made a copy of Alice as a Charlie, as a reference system. Yes. So I think that the mechanism is, is, does not um, require the Charlie, but uh, in order to mathematically check, we need a reference system. Oh, OK, thank you. Any other question? Uh, I have a question. So yes. you said that some there due to the some interaction, uh, the uh, pair the EPR pair, I mean hooking radiation is not might not be possibly a uh, maximal entangler mm -hmm. to the black hole. Mm -hmm. In such a case, uh, when for the importing observer, mm -hmm. does this see like a really low horizon or see something? 
Uh, I think that that is uh, uh, nothing to do with the horizon. So, uh, so uh, probably the particle and the particle pair creation process can be uh, way uh, outside the event horizon, and su such an interaction can be provided by the the outside particles or whatever it is. So. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't catch the exact uh, question, but uh, maybe it's not uh, related to observer. Uh, I mean, the the argument, usual argument that smooth horizon is that uh, for importing, I mean, or maximally entanglement is uh, importing observer does not see anything. Oh, right, right, right. That, that means, that, that means, uh, you know, yeah, that, that is a very uh, good point. And, Indeed, usually the no drama condition means that um, uh, these two particles are um, entangled each other and it's separable. So, uh, mm -hmm. so separable by uh, means that um, so around the horizon, nothing strange happens. So there is no way to entangle uh, between mm -hmm. this uh, black hole state and uh, these particles. However, if there is a firewall near the horizon, let's say, yeah. so if uh, there is some physical object near the horizon, then um, uh, this horizon can create particles. And then from the beginning, these two particles are entangled to uh, the black hole system. So I think uh, the, the no, nothing new happens means that um, these two particles are a separable system. And separable system means that two particles are entangled only with each other. But I think it doesn't necessarily be um, maximally entangled. And even though they are maximally entangled, if, if uh, there is an interaction between the third party, so if they are interact with each other, then um, these two particles may not be maximally entangled. Such a condition oh, will be the, When just uh, the pair is created, it, it will be maximally entangled, but uh, maybe some other, after that, some, uh, with the other interaction, maybe it's... Uh, right, 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 right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, any other question? So, let me ask one more question. So, yes, probably yes. next time you will discuss about that, but. Uh, uh, are there many like a resolution to the this you uh, you told me that these uh, five uh, uh, some facts that are not <laughs> yes. at the same time? Uh, that, yeah, that's so, a very, very uh, good question. And indeed, uh, uh, some uh, it's uh, of course there are many ideas. I think, but uh, in my opinion, uh, we can categorize uh, one of five. So um, I, if you um, so we may categorize either you drop one or two or three or four or five. We may categorize and for each categories there can be several um, um, alternative ideas. I think. I see. Mm -hmm. So still, uh, uh, some of them are not not rule out or there like uh, some what is uh, some. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe uh, t tomorrow I will uh, discuss. And recently, there's a very uh, big um, uh, development in the string theory side. So, so maybe, mm, <laughs> maybe I, I don't know. So, what, um, mm, uh, what is mm, consensus? It, yeah. It's still, so like I, a... I'm saying it's, um, it, it's not difficult to. It, it's not easy to say some idea is the consensus. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the here, when you say local quantum field theory, uh, what do you by here local means? Yeah, so I, I mean, it's just the usual quantum field theory. So everything is local and there's no non-local uh, interactions. But uh, as I previously said, uh, uh, the, if there is a causal contact between earlier radiation and inside the black hole, then maybe it can explain the information of the paradox. But uh, then such a correlation must be uh, very uh, non-local. So something like this. Or, but uh, like a, uh, I don't know, some like a, after page time and long time later, 
mm. when the quantum gravity is uh, important, mm. then nice. this uh, like a local it can record it local quantum field theory. All right. So, so in that sense, if uh, some principles can um, provide a very natural um, issue that that realizes such a non-local interactions based on um, quantum gravity, then I think that is a very good idea to um, resolve the, the uh, inconsistencies. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I look forward to the tomorrow's lecture. And, uh, please ask uh, any uh, question. Well, I, I can give uh, one comment about the yes. uh, well, I mean, string, string theory resolution of uh, uh, the AMPS uh, paradox. Mm. And I, I think uh, the, the recent uh, development says that, uh, well, I mean, the locality, mm. well, uh, especially, I mean, this story of uh, island mm. says that the locality uh, uh, we have a more uh, uh, basically violation of a uh, locality uh, right. in, in, in the resolution, and so the uh, number two. Mm. But uh, this is uh, in a in a so, so very subtle way, uh, mm. and so there is also causalities involved because mm. island is basically inside the horizon. Right. And so the inside the uh, inside the horizon region is included into basically in, included into the radiation. Mm. So the inside the horizon region, some part of uh, inside the horizon region is identified with the uh, uh, radiation uh, basically, uh, and, and so that that is the resolution uh, which is certainly. Uh, uh, in trouble with the locality mm, right. uh, in in the curved space time. Mm. Uh, so so that uh, that is uh, what uh, recent uh, development mm. says. Uh, at the end of the day, right. Uh, I agree uh, absolutely. I, I, right. I don't think this is proven, uh, mm. uh, but uh, very uh, it, it is well, uh, but it's uh, certainly very convincing. Uh, mm. Mm. Some sense. Right, right, I agree. Right. So, any other comment or question? Uh, <clears throat> I'm still wondering uh, what happens near the horizon. Mm. Actually, uh, if we consider some pair creation over the, uh, yeah, so we can think of the uh, Schrodinger effect. Mm. Then the external electric field is definitely external. Mm -hmm. So, which is supposed the uh, mm -hmm. uh, mono uh, entanglement? Am I right? Right, right. Then, the, uh, similarly <coughs> to this Schrodinger pair creation, we can consider mm -hmm. uh, pair creation on the background of gravity. Mm -hmm. Then, the, actually, uh, gravity gravitational field plays a role of external electric field like the pair creation of Schrodinger mechanism. Mm -hmm. So uh, I worry about the uh, spoiling entanglement of the uh, pair right. on the background of gravity. So right. I'm still wondering uh, yeah, yeah. how to... Yeah, right, right. So, uh, so I wrote uh, this paper, but indeed, uh, uh, when I, we, I wrote this paper, I didn't have any mechanism, state of mechanism to realize the deviation from the original page conjecture, but if one can provide such a detailed mechanism and if we quantitatively evaluate uh, how it deviates, then I think this may be very interesting. Mm. Mm. So. <laughs> Any other question? Uh, if not, let's thank speaker again. Okay?